today I am headed to get my granny. I'm headed to take her to her orthopedic appointment. Hopefully she will get her cast removed. And I personally don't think that's gonna happen. I think they're gonna take it off, they're gonna x-ray it, and then they're gonna put another one back on. But that's just my opinion and I'm no doctor, so. Um, and it's gonna be quite the experience because my mom and my aunt are going with us. And you know, Deb, my mama, <laughs> We're done planning to hit a couple thrift stores. We've already told Granny, we're taking you with us. You're going to the thrift stores. And of course, Granny's excited about that too. Um, so it is freezing cold here. I'm gonna sneeze. <coughs> Ooh. It is freezing cold here, um, which I'm not complaining. We need the cold weather. We, we need a good winter to kill out some of these bugs. And um, we just, we haven't had a good cold winter in a very long time. So we really need this and I love it. I just wish I didn't have to get out in it today, but that's okay. It'll be a fun day. I think I feel another sneeze coming on. Maybe not. Anyway. Ugh. Y'all, I haven't done a chatty car ride in a long time because I pretty much don't go anywhere. But um, I posted my video yesterday of In the Kitchen with James where he made his cabbage rolls, which they're so good. And some of y'all told me how y'all add the tomato sauce and all that to it, which I'm gonna try that. I love tomato sauce and I think that would actually be a good uh, change. I mean, they're good the way they are, but definitely having that would be another option. So thank y'all so much for the ones of you who told me about that. But those cabbage rolls are so good. But anyway, I had so many comments about James. Y'all, that thing is a mess. I try so hard to get him on my channel because honestly people like him more than they like me on the channel they think that he just totally adds to the channel and I get it I mean I get it but I can't get him to I mean like I had to beg and plead to get him to do that recipe but um and y'all don't know the editing that went into that video y'all just don't know y'all do not know what all I cut out and uh, <sighs> I told him, I said, you are making my job so hard because the editing, and I showed him when I got through editing, I said, you see all these little slices? I said, that's where I've had to cut and piece. <sighs> he just laughed. He thought it was funny. Which I'm on to his game because he made the comment to, who was he telling? He said my friend Katie. He's like, I love YouTube. I love her doing YouTube, he said, because it keeps her busy. She sits over there with her iPad and she's editing. And he says, it keeps her out of my hair. It keeps her busy. So I'm wondering, did he do all that so uh, I would just be busy and not bother him? Yeah, my hair's driving me crazy right here. I don't know what's going on. But I don't want to mess with it too much because of the static. So I'm like, hmm. I'm on to him so I think that I should just put up a video of how he is and not cut anything out so y'all can see the real James Jackson <laughs> yeah there was just so much I had to edit and uh, but I'm trying y'all I'm trying to get him on the on my channel more I told him I said look I said you would really help this channel grow if you would be on here more like we could get way more subscribers but anyway, I'm so proud of my little channel. I love it. Um, I know I probably am doing it completely wrong as far as everything I put on my channel. I think you're supposed to have like a specific thing and that's what your channel is all about. But 
like if it's just about crafting and DIY and that's all you should put on it or if it's just about cooking that's all you should put on it if it's just about makeup that's all you should put on it but the way I look at it is I like all of that like I can't be the only person that has multiple interests I mean I love watching cooking I love DIY decorating makeup crafts I love watching vlogs I love seeing how other people live and and getting a glimpse into their life and I love all of that so I just put all that on my channel and I I don't know if it helps or hurts I probably it probably hurts like in the analytics but I don't understand the analytics anyway it's just a whole bunch of errors and numbers and most of the time they're down and red so I, I don't know um, I just do the best that I can I know that I'm not the most sophisticated channel uh, as far as like the editing tricks and stuff but I do my best and I constantly try to improve and I think in the grand scheme of things that's all any of us can do and kind of apply that to life you do the best you can you try to learn and you try to uh, apply new things that you've learned that will benefit you and that's pretty much life you know so that's what I'm doing with my channel I enjoy it I have so much fun and it is a lot of work it is so time consuming like I was talking to a friend of mine the other day we we're texting she was asking me something about YouTube. And I said, I'm sitting here trying to find music, you know, for my channel. And I said, this is the hardest job I've ever worked at. I, I, y'all, I'm not even exaggerating when I tell y'all this. I put at least, and this is on a minimum, there's probably times I put more than this, but at least 50 to 60 hours a week on YouTube. And there's so much that, like, y'all see the videos that may be, you know, 10, 20 minutes long. But there's so much that goes into that little bitty video that's maybe 10 to 20 minutes long. There's so much that goes into that. Like, it is unreal the work that goes into that. And I am not complaining. Don't get me wrong. I love it. It was a choice I made, and I don't regret it for a second. Well, I, the only thing I regret is I didn't start it sooner, but that's okay. Um, but I put so much time, so much energy into YouTube. Literally, when I tell y'all it consumes my thoughts and everything, I am not <laughs> exaggerating. <laughs> like, everything I do or think about, it's like, ooh, how can I apply that or use that for my channel? And there are so many videos that I may record that y'all that never see the light of day because either they're not good enough or I feel it's insignificant or it's not worthy, <laughs> whatever the case may be. But I do spend so much time on this channel. There is so much that goes into it, more than what you see. So um, anybody that has a channel the last thing I ever want to do is discourage them or you know criticize them because I know how much work it takes and just because it's not like maybe something that piques my interest or that works for me or I agree with or whatever the case may be does not mean that it's not for others you know so kudos to everyone who puts forth the effort because I know what it takes and I definitely definitely don't ever want to um, discourage or you know if I'm if I'm in a video that particularly doesn't it's not doing it for me I'm not gonna leave a thumbs down or a nasty comment I just look out of the video it's that simple and um, if, if I am watching a video that I like, um, I definitely thumbs it up and I try to, you know, leave a comment. Um, if 
there's something in it that I don't understand, I definitely ask questions. You know, I mean, it, but I know how much time and effort it takes to put into making a video. And I don't even know why I got off on this, but I just, I love it so much. And it is the hardest job I've ever had. <laughs> but it's also the best. And I'm considering it my job right now because I don't have another, like, job. Um, so I'm considering, considering it my job. I mean, it's always been my job. It's just kind of been a sideline job that I knew would eventually pay off. And it's going to. I, I just, I have faith and I believe that eventually it's going to, all this hard work is going to pay off. And, um. love it. There was something else I was going to tell y'all. I can't think. I lost my train of thought. Nothing new there. Um, so, got through Christmas. It was different this year. Got through New Year's. It was different this year. But, um, I'm very grateful that family made it through. Several of my family members got COVID and um, got over it. And I don't know that I had COVID because I never did go get tested, but <laughs> my friend Katie, who's a nurse, and my daughter, who's a nurse, said I was textbook COVID. I don't know. I, I don't know but I'm better. I got over it. And I've had several people ask me questions because I realized I never really addressed it once I brought it up. Uh, how my daughter's father's doing. He was real, real sick and had COVID and he's doing fine. He come through fine. Thank the Lord. So, um, and thank you all who are concerned and asking. I, and, Y'all are just the sweetest. Y'all are just the absolute sweetest people. My mom is texting me. <sighs> that thing's a mess, y'all. She and I have gotten so close, and I love it. There was many, many years that um, we didn't have a relationship, and God restored he definitely can restore and make things new and better. And we, she and I, are living proof of that. We are closer than we've ever been before. And we know now that there's nothing that will ever come against or between us again. We learned a lot. And through a lot of prayer and the Lord working things out, um, and honestly, we, I can look back now and I don't even know what it was about, you know. I, I thank God that he's blurred all that for me. And so none of that can creep back in. Whatever it was, I don't even know. But we are living proof that God is a God of transformation and restoration. And he has been so good. Y'all, my family alone, we could write a book that would blow your mind on just the things he's done in our family. And I know we're not the only one. I know there are so many of y'all out there that are like probably saying, yeah, I, yeah, us too, us too. But he has been so good to us and I just thank him every day that um, she and I are where we're at. And I love the fact that James loves that we have the relationship that we have. He is all about wanting me and my mama to be close and he's all on board for us spending time together and going places and doing things together and to have his support is wonderful. It's just, it means everything, you know, and the way that he loves my family and the way that my family loves him, you know, when it all comes down to it, it's all about family. You know, family, your your core, uh, everything, God, family, that's it. You know, that's really all you need. And um, the older I get, the more I learn and the more I realize it's not about stuff. And it's not about money. It's not about um, so 
social status. It comes down to your relationship with God and family. And in that order, God is first. You know, put Him above all. He is the absolute. He is the great I Am. And, you know, once you get your priorities in line and in order, it's amazing how things just kind of work themselves out and start falling into place. And I'm so blessed. I know that, you know. Um, and I don't have to have the latest vehicle and the, the most expensive handbag and the finest wardrobe and the, the largest jewels. I don't have to have all that to be content and happy. You know, and at one time I did, y'all. At one time I did. Is I don't want to sound like I'm against all that. And um, there was a time in my life where there was such a void in my life because I did not have a relationship with God. I did not have a good, like, relationship with my family and there was such a void in my life that I was constantly constantly feeling trying to fill that void with stuff and things and people and not healthy things you know there was a time that you know I didn't care how much I drank I didn't care you know I didn't care I would drink till I was so sick. I mean, it took God getting my attention about that. I wasn't an alcoholic. I was a social drinker. But I did abuse alcohol in the fact that I was in so much pain and turmoil inside because of that void that I would try to fill it with prescription drugs, alcohol. Um, I tried it. I was going out, partying, you know, had all the wrong people in my life, you know, I was doing everything to try to fill a void that the only thing that was going to fill it was God, you know, he was the only one that was going to be able to take away the pain, the hurt, feel that emptiness, that loneliness, that hurt, it was God, and I had to hit rock bottom, rock bottom. I basically had to lose everything I had for God to begin to work on me and help me and make me realize I'm, I'm, I'm doing it all wrong. He is the only one that can heal and help me. And, um, was it easy? No, <laughs> no, it was not easy. It was one of the hardest times in my life. And, but when you're going through that, it's so hard to be able to see what you're going through, to see what's really happening and what's going on. But now that I can't, I'm, I'm through it. I can, I can step back and I can look and I can see what I was doing and, and it was horrible. I mean, I, y'all, y'all just don't know. And I'm not, I'm not saying this because I'm proud of it and I'm not condemning or anything, anybody that drinks and smokes and any of that. I'm not condemning any of that. So please don't take that away from this. What I'm trying to say is I abused everything because I was in so much pain and turmoil on the inside that I was trying to find anything I could to numb it, dull it, take it away. And I didn't care. I, would, I tried anything. I tried anything. Now, when I say I tried anything, I was a scaredy cat as far as drugs, but I mean, I ain't gonna lie. I had some lower tabs. I had my alcohol and I popped them and I drank it. You know, I didn't care that I mixed it. Uh, I tried marijuana. I never did try any of the, I mean, I, I used to eat Xanax like it was candy. Uh, and I'm not talking one pill. I'm talking I'd pop four or five at a time. Um, which would knock me out. I, there was so many, I can remember going to work on a Saturday. I had my own salon. I 
would go to work, I would get off at noon, I would come home, I would pop four Xanax, and I would sleep literally until Monday night. I'm talking that's, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, it got to the point where I would go, I've got two tattoos, I had so many piercings, and I would get the tattoos and get the piercings, and I had um, James's mom, this was all before James, James's mom even asked me, she's like, um, so why did you get your tattoo? Because I had a nose ring, I had a belly ring, I had so many piercings on my ears, and I was planning more. And um, she was like, so why did you get your tattoos and piercings? I said, honestly, I got them because I was trying to do anything I could to divert the pain. That's why I did it. <laughs> I don't care about these tattoos. I hate these tattoos. They mean nothing to me. The one on my back that I got, my tramp stamp, <laughs> so lovingly referred to, um, I got it because I was told not to. So what did I do? You gonna tell me not to? I'm gonna do it. Um, and I got one on my foot because I was in so much pain when I went and got that one. I was doing everything I could to not hurt. So instead of getting down to the root cause of things, I would try to, you know, divert pain away from, instead of dealing with the actual problem. And it was just, so I am a living, walking testimony to what God can do. Um, I will tell you that my breaking point, um, as far as the drinking and stuff, um, James and I were dating, and me and him and a friend of mine went to one of the casinos, to uh, one of the clubs that was uh, second home to me. Like, every weekend I was at the club, you know, drinking and partying every weekend. And per usual, we went out and I was throwing them back, throwing them back, throwing them back. And I have no doubt that in technical terms, I probably, I'm 99.9% I'm .9 sure I had alcohol poisoning. I was so close to death. I remember, um, James taking me out. I was in the floorboard of my friend's car in the back seat, and he was holding on to my belt loop, keeping me in the car from falling out because I was vomiting so much. I vomited so much that weekend. The weekend, okay? The weekend. I busted blood vessels in my eyes. I was so sore and dehydrated. I was sick the whole entire, that was a Friday night. I was sick that whole entire weekend up until Monday. And I remember sitting in that car in between the vomiting episodes. And I told James, I said, this is not who I was created to be. I said, the only reason I'm alive right now is because I have no doubt my granny is up praying for me right now. And I looked at him and I said, if this is the kind of life and this is the kind of woman you want, I ain't your girl. Because if God will let me live and get me through this, I will never drink another drink in my life. As you can see, I made it through. I'm here. Um, and he's still with me. But I meant every word of that. And from that moment on, my life changed. And has it been easy? No. Are there days that I wish I could drink a nice glass of wine to just kind of chill out? Yes. Will I? No. Because I made a promise to God. And I'm very, very committed to that promise to God. 
I was so ashamed of myself. I look back now and I'm so ashamed of the person I was then. But I think now, I know now, if you was to ask me, would you go back and change anything? No, I would not. Because all of that made me who I am today. And I may not be your cup of tea. Um, you may not like me. You may not agree with me. And that's fine. But I like me. I like the person that I am. I know that I have a good heart. I know that I love with everything in me. And I know that I am not that person I used to be. I know that I'm not the person I'm going to be when God gets finished with me because he, he works on me constantly. Y'all, this mouth gets me in so much trouble, but God works on me. He convicts me, and I am not too proud or too big to apologize if I've done wrong because I do. I'm not perfect. And I don't want to... I'm really not trying to come across as... I am perfect because y'all I am so imperfect there are days that I get on to myself because my mouth overloads my butt and I say things or I do things I wish I hadn't done and I have to repent and strive to do better I am in no way trouble to paint a picture as I am perfect because <laughs> if perfection is what you're looking for I ain't it I am not it, but I do want to acknowledge the growth and how far I've come, and I'm proud of that. I'm proud of who I am today, and I know that when God finishes with me, finishes with me I'm going to be proud of that, but everything is a process, and you know, I'm just in that process. I'm on that potter's wheel. And trust me, the potter's wheel is a very, very, very hard place to be. But, you know, he puts me back on the wheel and he starts all over again. <laughs> and, you know, works out the problem areas. And I learn more and I grow more. And we was in church a couple of weeks ago and um they were singing this old song learning to lean and that song hit home to me because I am at a place now in my life where God is teaching me more now than ever I'm learning to lean on God on Jesus more than I ever have before and the safest place you can be and the safest place that you can put your family is in the hands of God and I'm learning to lean more than I ever have and y'all, I can look at this crazy world and the uncertainty and the chaos and I can know that I am in the safest place possible because I'm in the hands of God. So no matter what happens around me, it's not going to matter because he's got me, you know? And I'm just saying me because I, all I can, I can only know me and what I'm going through in my battles and, you know, but just know that God is the God of new beginnings. God is the God of restoration and he can take anything and make it good. He can take a mistake and you would have a message. He can take a test and create a testimony. And y'all, 
I look back over my life and I see where God has brought me from and how low I went and I see where I am today you know um, in my lowest times I look back uh, you know we had pictures and, and all that and I can look back and I can know when I look on some pictures I can I can look at myself in those pictures and see and remember where I was at during the time that, that photo was taken and you know I haven't always been this size you know I'm heavier now than I've ever been in my life including pregnancy and you know I'm not gonna sit here and say that I'm content and happy with the size I'm not but I look back at the pictures when I was the smallest I've ever been which was not too many years ago and I knew I know now looking back on those pictures and, and the size I was and how cute I thought I was that inside might have been cute on the outside but that inside was nasty that inside was so black and nasty and just dark and just full of turmoil and just ugh. and I can put pictures side by side of being a nail and I would take nail over that any day size and everything because again I know the difference and I know where I was at and where I'm at and you know good Lord willing he'll help me lose some weight you know and if not that's okay you know I'm happy I'm in a stable marriage I'm in a, a healthy marriage and I'm in a I have a husband who loves me for me, who only wants the best for me, and my children are happy and healthy, and our blended family is beautiful, and just in a good place, um, and I understand that, you know, this is not where I will stay as far as the person I am, I, you know, like I said, God is continually working on me. And I welcome that. I want that. I pray for that. Um, and I'm going to continue to lean on Jesus. And he is going to continue to take care of me and mold me and shape me and work on me and correct me, discipline me, and love me. And at the end of the day, what more did you ask for? Y'all, I had no intention of getting off on this, but, you know, God has his plans and reasons, and if this can encourage and help you, then I hope it does, and I covet your prayers. Thank y'all so much for your sweet thoughts and prayers, and um, I can see that I've been rambling too long, but just know that I love you, and I appreciate you all, and don't give up, don't give up, there's always hope, pray, 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 to fail of your relationship with God, your relationship with God, not what somebody tells you should be your relationship with God, your personal relationship with God work on that, get that, and that's all you need. He'll work everything else out for you, for your good. 